Abbey Road Institute presents How to Build Your Career as a Producer or Engineer. Please welcome Manon Grangine, Amir Yakub, and Ricky Damien. Hello, everyone. <coughs> Hello. Oh, I can hear myself. That's a bit weird. Um, <laughs> everyone okay? Welcome, welcome. Um, so my name's Charlie Thomas. I'm going to be uh, our, I guess, host, I want to say host, I don't know, mediator for today. Um, yeah, I'd like to introduce you to my fabulous panel of guests. We've got Ricky Damien at the end, Manon Grandjean and Amir Yacoub. Give them a big hand again. <laughs> We've already had that. So, yeah, so we're here to talk about how you all started in the industry. So I guess I'm going to fire over some questions about maybe like your first job, education you had before you started in the industry. Um, Ricky, do you want to kick us off? Tell us yeah. about yourself, what you're up to now, where you start. <clears throat> I, I'm from Italy. I was born and raised in Italy and I got into music at age six, started playing guitar and suddenly discovered the world of recording and you know engineering and producing at age 14. Um, I had never asked myself before, how does music get recorded? How do you make a record? I was just listening to music. And so as soon as I got in touch with the recording environment, I just fell in love with it and I started interning into the local studio in my town, Treviso. Uh, I then moved to London in 2012 when I was 19 after high school and attended SAE Institute. Uh, and after graduating in 2014, I started working for producer Mark Ronson as his in-house engineer. At the time, he had a studio here in Tyliard. Um, <clears throat> really beautiful analog studio and one of the reasons that I got the job is because I was very very into analog gear and especially tape I grew up with tape with you know big consoles and vintage mics and stuff like that and out of my intake I was the only one that knew how to use tape because sadly it's one of those things that is kind of like fading away um, and I started so I started working for Mark in 2014 we've been working ever since um, and then went freelance in 2017 started doing a lot of other different projects with artists like Sampha, Georgia Smith, Ezra Collective, Sam Smith, um, a lot of mixing, producing, engineering, many hats uh, in a way so I guess that's me. Nice, nice to meet you. Uh, Manon, tell us about yourself. Um, it's funny because it's quite a similar, I'm similar sure story. <laughs> So I'm from uh, south of France and um, I also, uh, like I was classically trained on, on guitar mm -hmm. when I was a child and teenager and I didn't know much as well about recording and at the time there wasn't as much info online and it was the beginning of internet. <laughs> so, um, so there wasn't that much, uh, you know, info about what recording like what a recording engineer does and, mm. and everything. So I, I interned in a studio in uh, south of France to discover what an engineer and a mixer does. Because it was such a secretive job, wasn't it? It was, yeah, yeah. I mean, still is to a degree. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so I did my internship there and then I realised that, you know, I fell in love with it and that's what I want to do. And... I studied in France. I studied um, audio engineering mm -hmm. for um, five years, and and then I came here in 2010 to do an internship in a studio here um, in a studio called Livingston Studio in North London. Awesome studio, amazing. <laughs> yeah. And um, and then <coughs> I never left. <laughs> <laughs> So I, got, I started um, as, an assi as a runner and then I sort of moved on to being an assistant and uh, I started working in another studio called State of the Art Studios in mm. Richmond, which was like analog uh, focused studio, quite boutique. Um, <clears throat> then I worked at Rack as well. I was uh, their in-house staff for three years. Um, and then I... So I, I was a freelance engineer and assistant for, for a few years. And I met uh, a producer, an English producer called Fraser T. Smith uh, during a session at Rack, and we started working together. So I was his, similar to you, I was his engineer. And so we worked on like a lot of records together and, and I developed um, mixing, which I didn't really do before. Um, so I started mixing and mastering um, what we were working on. And 
since uh, 2020, I decided to go, like, to go my own way and just be mixing and mastering all the time. Awesome. I love how casual you both were about, like, Fraser T. Smith, Mark Ronson. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, those. Uh, who are they? Once um, you start seeing them every day. Yeah, I yeah. guess it's just another. It's just another face at work, isn't it? Yeah. Um, uh, cool, Amir. How about you? Um, so slightly different story. I didn't move from anywhere nice like you guys are. <laughs> so I've always been a Londoner. Um, I I started in music. I guess when I was like fifteen, I was um, just like singing and stuff like that, and. I then just caught a bit of a bug for making music. Like mm -hmm. that would have started at the piano and writing music and whatever. But it's I, you know, got Cubase and a really rubbish microphone and started putting those those songs down and whatever. And I caught that bug. And then obviously I went to college. Um, and then I went to university. Um, I went to the Leeds Conservatoire, as they're now called. Nice. Um, I studied my degree and my masters there. And I kind of came back to um, London. And I didn't really know what to do because, like, it just, it was a weird time in the industry. Mm -hmm. It didn't seem like there was any real way to break in or anything like that. Um, and by some stroke of luck, uh, my friend who's here today, Matt, he uh, called me up and said, listen, Metropolis Studios needs someone to work at night on reception <laughs> <laughs> from, like, 6 p.m. until... 9 a.m. the next morning or whatever it was. And you're like, oh, I'm free those times. And I was like, well, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, what, what else am I going to do? Sleep. Yeah, yeah sleep. Um, so, so basically, <laughs> I started there. Um, and obviously, it wasn't a role in the studios or anything like that, but it was very much getting to know uh, people in the studio um, and obviously just building a few relationships there. Um, and then, you know, I started doing interning as it, as it was. Uh, moved into being an assistant um, and then into an engineer. Uh, spent some time there. I was fortunate enough to work with like huge acts. Mm. Um, and then um, I felt like I wanted to kind of focus more on production. Yeah. Um, and I learned so much in terms of engineering, mixing, and stuff like that. I moved. Um, I moved completely freelance. And I continued to mix because it's something that I love to do and I'm mm -hmm. actually pretty good at. Um, but also, um, I just started to focus more on production stuff as yeah. well. And so I went, I went freelance after that period. Cool. So, and, and I've been freelance ever since. I work out my own studio in Hackney. So Wicked. So yeah, it's good. Nice, nice. Well, I think you, you've all mentioned about the different roles you have to play. And you, know, you, you said that you're good at mixing. And I think it's good to know <coughs> your strengths, obviously. Um, but did you all find on your journeys that you're not just a producer, you're not just an engineer? There's what kind of, yeah, I mean, what, what kind of, if you were to take your, like, your five-day week, is it the same job every day or is it Monday I'm a producer, Tuesday I'm a writer, man, Wednesday I'm, I'm a gardener. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Friday I'm a psychologist. Taxi driver. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I think... For everybody, everybody has a different approach to this industry. I feel like maybe we, we share a common, um, you know, way into the industry, but we all get in for different reasons, mm -hmm. I feel. Um, one thing is looking at the industry from the outside and be like, I want to be that guy. And, you know, I personally, I can speak for myself. I grew up being like, I want to be an engineer producer after I understood what that actually meant. Mm -hmm. As in, I want to be a Nigel Godrich. I want to be a person that is, you know, responsible for making amazing records uh, with bands, with acts. You know, not not just being one person or the other. So yeah. I never really thought that you could only be one thing. No, of I'm course. sure the industry was like that until maybe some years ago. Uh, and by all means, specializing into something makes you, you know, a master of mm. that. I think surviving in this industry as of today. That's probably not the best formula, especially for young people. Mm. I think it's actually to your advantage to be very, you know malleable and flexible and wearing different hats. Yeah, definitely. It's, you know, the, sometimes the line is so thin, and I'm mm -hmm. sure you guys agree with me, it's definitely. like between engineering and production, especially, yeah. if there's not a producer, not producer in the room and you're with an act, you're the default producer. You are making those yeah, decisions, aren't you? You are you're helping the artists realize their vision, which is what production ultimately is. Mm. You know, production is such a big term and it means everything and nothing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but ultimately, I think, you know, from a generic standpoint, production is your curator. You're helping an mm. artist get from A to B. Yeah, you're like a facilitator almost. You're, exactly. Yeah. And then, you know, from that, all the technical roles, whether that's recording, mixing, 
mastering, uh, doing playback, preparing live stuff, mm. uh, programming, like just these are all things. And now, you know, things are evolving <laughs> to which such speed. So mixing is becoming mixing in Atmos or mixing in stereo mm. or, you know, there's so many different things that we need to know. And I think it's, you know, jack of all trades, <laughs> master of all trades. Master well. of all trades. Yeah, yeah. Because you have to be the best. Like, you know, it's a very competitive industry. But yeah, really, you know, hugely. You guys, mm. And I think it's more about also diversifying your income stream, <coughs> I yeah. think especially for me when I came out of, I did internships at, at studios for free, so I was, I was, I had to find ways of making money that was related to music, however loosely related to music it was, and I guess working for free was something I had to do quite a lot when I first started out. Did you, did you all have the same experience, Manon, did you have to... Do you, did you, do you still work for free? Do you do stuff for free? <laughs> did you? Um, I just wanted to go back to the, the sort of multi-hat uh, yeah, yeah, questions yeah. that maybe as opposed to, um, you know, Ricky and um, Amir, I'm not, I, I wanted to actually focus on the, I never, I actually never wanted to be a producer and I'm not a producer. Yeah. Did you always know what, yeah. exactly what you wanted to do? <clears throat> and I, I wanted to be in the technical side. I wanted to be in behind the desk. I, d I wanted to be, I don't think, I think to be a producer, it's a you have to have a certain maybe personality and, and we talked about this a bit before, like there's mm. a lot of psychology to it. And, and I, I focused really on I want to be an engineer and yeah. I, I went sort of a bit like full on in that direction. Mm. And I think sometimes it does also serves you well to focus on one thing mm -hmm. and really get really good at it. And, and then, you know, obviously sometimes if you have sessions that you have to be producing things or, mm -hmm. or mixing and, and stuff, but it, there is, you know, some value in just focusing on one thing and being, to, to know that you, I, like, I want to do this, yeah. so I'm going to learn everything I can about this. And, and being like, you know, I'm really good at it, or like being one of the top people that, mm. you know, would get... I mean, some, some engineers, they get all the, you know, they get called on all the sessions, and, and they only engineer all the time. Mm. Yeah. So I, I feel like th there is a bit... It's quite daunting as well at the beginning when you start to be like, oh my God, I need to know, I need to learn how to produce, I need to learn yeah, I need to know how to mix, things, I need yeah. to learn this and that. And it's overwhelming it's, enough. It's a bit overwhelming, I think. Yeah, so, definitely. Um, yeah, but I, so working for free, okay. <laughs> it's all right, we can stay on, we'll stay on this topic. <laughs> okay. I, I also okay. found, I don't know, for, for Amir, for you, when you were at the studio, whether you, did you know exactly what you wanted to be when you were joining the industry? Or um, did you just want to no, find experience? No, I didn't actually. I kind of, mm. I, I, I love all aspects, right? Sure. So mm. I love like from, writing, recording, mixing, you know, producing the whole lot. Yeah. And I feel like for me, um, what I got as an education, both in my education as in, and in the studios was, I kind of saw how all of the parts just fit in with mm. each other. Yeah. And how, you know, for instance, just like knowing how to mix an EQ properly means that you'll make the right sound selection in production. Which, yeah, of course. You know, all of that kind of stuff, just kind of yeah. getting, it, getting it tied together. Mm. Um, and I think, I, I as as I went on and I did like more time in the studio and stuff like that. I, I what, what really got me was just the bug to be more creative musically. Yeah. And so that's where I've tried to kind of steer stuff. Mm. And you know, as you were saying, what does a five day week look like for mm. you? Well, f five day weeks don't exist. No, 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 no. But also, Actually, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But also, um, they will be different day to day. Mm. But you know, once you're locked in on a project, like if I'm particularly if I'm working with an artist or whatever, like, yeah. and they've hired me to do a role of one degree, mm -hmm. it's like, that's me for like two weeks. For however long I mean, that's yeah, going on exactly, for. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, I found that also being in, I guess being at Metropolis may have been the same, being in the studio is that you, you see how all different types of genres of music are made. Absolutely. And, and the similarities between Absolutely. the skill set you need yeah. to make any kind of music. Yeah, and what it takes to be great. Yeah, yeah. And, the f and, and seeing, gre witnessing greatness, I found was mm. a massive... I, it was really like you kind of had touching moments. I think when I was like engineering and I did sessions where I I was like shit. I just that that was that was awesome. Yeah, what I just I saw that was witness history. Yeah, you yeah. do get you yeah. do get some. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you guys definitely have worked with some amazing people as well. Mm. So you know, I'm jealous of some people that you've worked. With. <laughs> and I guess yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're both, both um, starting out, let's go back to the the free thing. The kind of <clears throat> trying to transfer from entering the industry and then getting paid for what you do. 
And I had to, yeah, I'd, yeah, I still do work for free, and I have done lots of work for free. And do you guys, did you do the same, Amir? Do you, um, when you started out? <clears throat> yeah, when I started out, I, mm. did, I did much more work for free. It's not that I don't do work for free. It's just that the payment is deferred. So now what it will be is, you know, because you understand the business a bit more, mm. because you understand how people's budgets operate and, you know, how you can make additional money on records, that's kind of how I work. So right. even a, a free, I mean, a free session will never be a free session in no. that sense. Um, but you, earlier on in your career, you do, you do need to do more free stuff. Um, but, you know... I, 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 my advice would be just don't do it for too long. Yeah. Like start getting to a place where you can price yourself, <clears throat> you know, in a good way. Mm. I guess it's all, it's that part of like, you have to build your client list, don't you? With, yeah, there's that, that sense of portfolio. Yeah, and you don't have the portfolio, do you? So you can't, everyone's like, it's well, a vicious circle. why should I work with yeah. you? Yeah. Because you don't have any yeah. credit, all these, you know, all these famous exactly. names on your credit list. Yeah. Um, I think it needs to be looked at as an investment. Like earlier yeah. on in your career, you're investing in your portfolio, you're investing in your career, you're proving yourself. And, mm. you know, that doesn't mean that, you know, by all means, people should take advantage of you or, you know, you, you shouldn't be exploited. Mm. We've all been exploited, and I'm sure. And every, every person that is in this industry, you know, would have had a period of time where they didn't feel like they were spending their time enough. And that's probably... That when you realize that you have to start charging, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. I, I, it, I, it kind of comes natural. I think at some point the clients, people start coming back to you. Yeah. You know, they like something you did maybe for free. Maybe you did it to, for a friend or whatever. Mm. And then w as soon as somebody starts picking up on it and be like, oh, I love that. Could you mix that? Then you have leverage to sort of start charging. But again, mm. we were talking about this earlier. It's a very unregulated industry. It's not, there's not a book that says, once you start getting clients, you should be charging this amount for a mix, this amount for a recording. So yeah. it's kind of like you're out there on your own. And mm. that's probably the biggest realization out, out of education that you have to do. You have to have yourself. It's like you have your skill set that is in constant development. The experience that you need to actually be in this industry, you acquire some of it at school, but some of it you need to acquire on the field. Mm. How, do you sell your, how do you market yourself in the industry? How do you, you know, get to pay your bills with it? That is the challenge we all have to face one way or another. And I feel like obviously working for free can be seen in two different aspects. One is the sort of economical side of it, but one is also the love side of it. Yeah. I, I do, you know, not every day because otherwise you don't pay your bills, but there are certain projects where money is not in the equation. Yeah, it's and it's not in the equation project. because there's never even a thought of it. There has to be a balance, doesn't there? Yeah. Like feeding there, there your soul and yeah. feeding your wallet. But there's, there's so many things that, you know, I would have done just out of love because yeah. That's sometimes how art is, you know what I mean? It's mm. not quantifiable sometimes. And sometimes you really like somebody, you know? Yeah, and yeah, you, yeah. Lo you believe in somebody so much and they maybe have, you know, 10 quid to, to mix a record. You just go like, no, don't worry about it. Like, I'm investing in you in a way. And then if something happens with it, we'll, deal, you know, we'll talk about it later. Mm. So especially if you get into writing and production, it, it's not like you don't really work with fees most of the time. I mean, mm -hmm. like, no. again, very unregulated. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, super unregulated. But... It's all an investment. It has to be mm. thought that way. And yeah, and I think yeah. when you care, when you care about an artist or when you connect with somebody, I think it's you, yeah, you're not really too bothered about it at that stage. You you kind of want them to do well and yeah, you as long as they buy you coffee or buy you dinner. You yeah, 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 yeah. You're fine <laughs> as long as yeah. Let's yeah. keep it moving. <laughs> and I think I think the other thing that is really important for especially for engineers is credits, and that yes. is mm. that is payment in yeah. a way yeah. because you know you. Early on in your career, you might be assisting engineering, you know, additional engineering, whatever. That credit to your career might mean way more than 100 quid, 200 Absolutely. quid, 1,000 quid. Yeah. Because that credit, you know, gives you credibility. That will be there forever. You know, mm. you actually do end up paying your bills with your por portfolio, with your resume. Um, if you, you know, if you get lucky enough and good enough at the beginning to, you know, pile up those credits. And yeah. um, again, in this industry, unfortunately, crediting is not done properly mm -hmm. uh, the movie industry is way forward compared to us they are really really careful like you know you see a music video of a song and even the you know like whatever the gatekeeper or the bus driver yeah, yeah, yeah. everybody's yeah, yeah. credited which is great that's that that's doesn't really be. happen in music yeah. I'm, I'm sure you guys had to do that as well it's like we have to fight for our own credits yeah i was gonna i was gonna bring that up and i didn't know if it was a bit of a 
I mean, it's. <laughs> a, it, I, I feel quite, really I'm strongly quite about credits it. from years ago. At the yeah, moment, from I mean, like when I first started out. I've got, with I've got so it. many uncredited mm. sessions and projects that I've been on. It's like because yeah. you all started in studios, didn't you? And when you when you are in the studio, you, the, whoever the clients are, they're just whoever the clients are, and you jump into a room, you do this session, you do that session. I mean, it must have been the same with Metropolis. And, Definitely. Mm, and the studios yeah. you worked at. Yeah, yeah. Did you find, have you had to fight for credits and stuff? Did you? I mean, it's, uh, when, you, when you're assisting on sessions, I mean, it's really hard to fight for it because mm. who do you go to? <coughs> yeah. Mm. And who, who's building the last, because obviously, you know, projects, they can go on for years and they go to 20 different studios and have so many different people working on Song. So, how do you, how how do you know that the song that you worked on is still on the record or still, still used, yeah. or what you recorded is still used? So it's it's really tricky. You know, most of the time you have to go back to the label or to yeah, the A and R, yeah. and and as an assistant, you don't really have that that direct contact with that pe that person. Mm. So it's really difficult. I just wanted to go back to the sorry to the free, no 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 <laughs> sorry it's probably me moving on free. too far to the free work because yeah, I feel yeah. I have a bit of a different opinion yeah, yeah. of the guys and I think I understand working for the love of it and um, building your clients and everything mm. but I feel like there should be um, um, a sort of a, a maybe like a trial base thing or like if you if someone wants to something if someone wants you to make something do it maybe on the spec. That means if they use it, that they can pay you something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if it's small, it yeah. could be 50 pounds. It could something, be something. Like a little something, because I don't feel like you should, you, you still putting in your time and your skills, however advanced they are. Yeah, yeah. Um, you shouldn't be expected to work for free. Yeah, and yeah. I feel like there, there's a lot of, uh, in life, I think it's because we are in a creative industry and we love what we do that we, we like we don't really care about the financial aspect of it, and we want to do it because we love the music or the artist. Mm -hmm. But then, at the end of the day, there's also a you don't go to the shop and be like, oh well, I have this for free, or or get to any other professional and say like, oh, can you do this for me for free? And then mm. what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so I think that there is there needs to be a bit of a balance, and also it's a bit unfair for. People like in my case, for example, when I came here, I didn't have that much support, like financial support, mm -hmm. and I couldn't afford to work for free, right? Because otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to stay here. Yeah, of and it's a bit unfair for people like that who maybe don't have parents supporting yeah, them, yeah. or and even if it's small, I think, or, <coughs> or if it's an exchange of skills, maybe if you're mixing a track for a friend then that friend can maybe play guitar or play drums for yeah, you. Yeah, do or, something in return. Or so, a bit of like a swap thing or, mm. or like you said, take you to dinner or, you know, and if you like recording a band, you can't tell me that they can pitch in 10 pounds and pay you 50 quid a day or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's, I feel there's a bit of give and take. Mm. Um, and do you reckon that the, the kind of the history of the industry leads us to continue that yeah, trend? Yeah, and I think the, the, the more as, professionals we do still work for free the more it's going to carry on and I think mm. if we want to put a, an end to it that there needs to be a change within yeah within us like we, we need to to stop it and there's still going to be people that are going to do it of course yeah um but try and get it so that it's try to sort of get expected. it yeah mm. yeah I, 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 think so. I, I found it really tough when I was when I interned at the studio because I was doing like two days of college and then interning three days a week and then I had a job in a bar on like Saturday, Sunday night, or in the evenings, I'd intern all day and then mm. I'd go to work at night just to get money together. Yeah. And it was, you know, it was really tough. It was, it was yeah. not fun. It is. You know? It is. Mm. It's a struggle. Yeah, yeah. proper struggle. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's, it's that thing <laughs> where mean, you're like... I mean, it's up to everyone. But yeah, you, you're trying, but you're, yeah, I would always justify it every day by like, but I've got an amazing opportunity in the <laughs> studio where I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm in this room with all these people and I'm, I'm learning stuff. But it, yeah, it should it should be easier, shouldn't it? It should be mm. less expected of mm. you to work less for free. Yeah. I mean, if you are like, the only thing that I would add is if you are going to work for free, like I said, just put a cap on it. Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. Just, or if don't time people take advantage. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just go like I'm going to do this for X amount of time. Yeah. After which period I'll review, and maybe it's time for some money, and you know you can because you would have learned a lot in that time about how to price yourself as yeah. well. Mm. 
I mean, what you're probably noticing is there's a lack of clarity about how to price yourself <laughs> and whether yeah, to work yeah. for free or not. Everyone has their own um, uh, opinion, but also mm -hmm. everyone has their own set of parameters. Mm -hmm. Like Manon yeah. said, you know, like it's, ha it's harder for her because she's come from a different country. For yeah, me. yeah. It was like, well, you know, like my, my family's here and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. you know, like I, I did have that actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I guess there's another point of that as well, which is um, like, being able to communicate with clients about limits of yeah. like mixed tweaks <clears throat> or revisions and <laughs> like good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how many? Like how many? How many do you say when? You, I don't. Where's, I personally don't. As in like, I feel. I feel. No, obviously, I totally agree with what both of you are saying. I think that the free stuff is something very early on in your career when mm. you're really just. Where you don't feel like you're so established. I think, yeah. obviously, after a while, when you start to understand that you're offering a product, by all means, it's like going to a shop. It's like being a lawyer. It's, I mean, I wish it was like being a lawyer. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm on the clock. Oh, yeah. yeah. And three, min two, three minutes more, so that's 50 more quid. No, I mean, <laughs> jokes aside, it's difficult to quantify what you mm. do as a creative. Mm. You know, it has, yeah. every creative industry has this issue. Audio yeah. just seems to be less advanced in understanding and figuring it out how mm. this works but i feel like we can all say this you know like after years in the job you 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 get comfortable and you get to understand how to price yourself and mm -hmm. then you don't work for free anymore you only do it for love i think that's that's something that just you know i i, I did i remember similarly to man and i i moved to this country i'm not from this country and mm. i didn't really have any you know, any money when I moved here, it was already big enough for me to study here, which is, you know, school is really expensive here. And so I remember, you know, by the time I was writing my thesis, I was, you know, working on the other side of town from the studio builder that used to exploit. I'm not trying to pity myself, but I'm saying like, <laughs> I used to do whatever, it, I was like, whatever it takes. I yeah, don't yeah. care. I, I want to be here. I want to stay here. I don't want to have to go back mm. because I came here for a reason. Yeah. So yeah. I would work for this crazy drunken studio builder for like 40 quid a day to yeah. do the, the, the craziest job. But like, I didn't feel it because that was all fueling back into my career. That was mm. fueling into my passion of doing this. So a week of that maybe kept me, you know, uh, paid my bills yeah. and then I could you know in the other time I had could mix record whatever get experience so it is a balance yeah I think that's the the bottom line it's a balance and at some point you know when you can't do it anymore and you know how to you know how you, you have to sort of every case is different I suppose. Mm. yeah mm. but um I think that's, uh, what was the other thing we were talking about? How many mixed uh, revisions are you going to do? Oh, mixed revisions, revisions. revisions. jeez, yeah, yeah, yeah. really? I mean, maybe, maybe... Would you I, set, like, a precedent? Or do you not, do, are you not... I... You're so confident in your mixed No, there's, like, there's a not. thing, no, it's not. <laughs> I mean, I, I might say this for everyone, but nobody's ever fully confident about anything. <laughs> no, definitely Very not. True. I have impossible. I don't think Serban can every morning is confident. Every day. I mean, yeah, maybe, he, maybe he is, never mind. But, like... There's a thing about, you know, obviously, like, you getting paid for your services. I, I personally, my personality stopped me from being like, it's only two revisions from the third, I'm going to start charging. I can't do that. No. Like, it's the person I am and the, the relationship I built with my clients as well. Obviously, you know, new clients is different. You can set different standards as, as, you, as you progress in your career. But for me, it's like, you know three, four revisions, and they go like, actually, sorry, do you mind, you know, that snare drum, like, whatever. It, it, it's your song, it's not my song. Yeah, just, yeah. you know, if it's not a seven-hour thing, mm. I'll do it. So I find it difficult to put boundaries, again, because it's difficult to quantify. Yeah. Um, but then when somebody starts taking the piss, obviously, then you have to have your safety net. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but well, you say, no, I, I, ju I just... This is done. But, <laughs> yeah, it's, sometimes you just have to, you know, it's, this is a very psychological job. There's, mm. It's a lot about personality. We were talking about this earlier. It's like, yeah. what you don't really know when you get into this, you know, from university or from experience in the studios, like, there's a lot of psychology involved into this mm -hmm. as an engineer or as a producer or as a mixer. Like, ultimately, you, it's creative industry. You're working in, in a... You're, you're working on somebody else's ideas yeah. and somebody else's feelings... It's your responsibility to actually help it, not do anything against it. Whether you are in the room with somebody for a month and that's like sharing a house, yeah. or whether you're mixing a record and that's what they've been—that's their baby. It's been their baby for like seven months, yeah. and you, you can only destroy it or make it better. Mm. So, you know, that is all to be taken into account. Mm. In There's the definitely that kind of personality thing, isn't there, where you can 
we talked about this earlier so much. again doing writing sessions and stuff where you can you need to try and make people feel comfortable in in the space when they're being creative or yeah i guess that's the thing that you don't really understand when you're at uni or when you're doing at college you don't understand how important it is for your your presence in the room for for something do you find do you find you when yeah you're doing sessions I producing yeah i feel like it's key to i mean your personality is going to count for everything like you know we play different roles in the studio we do play the roles of producers mm -hmm. and engineers and i remember when i was an assi assistant engineer and basically I was like Casper the friendly ghost. So if you needed me, I was there, but like you wouldn't be able to see me really because yeah, I'm in yeah, the yeah. back of the room. As you move more into production stuff and whatever, like you suddenly become someone's therapist um, overnight. You know, it's just like, <laughs> oh, you chose to speak to me about all these problems you're having in your life. Um, a bit like a bartender. Or right, exactly. <laughs> but you know what? It actually, it, exactly. Yeah. But it actually feeds their creativity a lot as well. Yeah. Um, and you know, it it create. The, I've created such great relationships with such great people in the mm. studio, and I literally worked with them for two days. Mm. Like there was there was um, um, there's a producer that I worked with when I was an engineer. Yeah. Um, and he's like, I speak to him all the time. Like, we're always in touch with each other. He's worked on huge records, Beyonce, Ariana Grande, blah, 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 blah. And we're just in touch with each other. I've, I, I haven't even seen him for, like, eight years. Mm. But it's just so funny how, you know, your attitude and your personality will count for a lot in those situations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll probably count for more than, 100%. may I say, your technical ability. Yeah. yeah. I think it's probably 50-50. You can't have one without the other, yeah. I think. Mm. Yeah. You need to still have the technical skills or the creative yeah. skills. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, you can't be awful, yeah. But, sure. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be, like, super nice, but not very good. Yeah, yeah. I would be blagging it. <laughs> the feelings <laughs> are better than a snare drum, OK? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I think it's so... But, but, but as well, you can't be just super fast on Pro Tools or no. very, you know, technical about, like, know your all your gear inside out and mm -hmm. all that maybe like doesn't matter at the end of the day if you can't communicate with people around yeah. you and read people's you know energy and mm. and you know know where, where to speak when not to speak and exactly. when to lead and when not to lead and so I, th I would say yeah it's about yeah it's super important you know mm. like if you're spending basically if you're spending 16 hours in a room every day with someone for Two, three weeks or whatever, just don't be an asshole, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try you need not to get to on, be an don't asshole. you? That's the bottom line. That's the, yeah. Don't be an asshole. <laughs> it's a motto. Try not to be. There's, there's a don't be an like asshole. That. Try not to be. An <laughs> <laughs> or at least try not. Well, to. it yeah. says a yeah. different word, but I'm not going to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We've, we've been to told be. we're not allowed to swear too much, even though that's yes. a very difficult thing <sighs> to do when you work <laughs> in the industry. Yeah, exactly. Cool. So to move on from that, we were going to. I obviously teach at Abbey Road Institute, and more about. We're going to talk about uh, females in the industry. I mean, we, it's a very male-dominated role in the studio, or has been in the past. And at the Institute, we have way more female students, which is obviously amazing, and they're fantastic. And I wondered if any of you had seen a change over the years, yeah. recent years, of yeah. the, the, the balance, is meeting more female producers, engineers, mixers, mastering engineers. Yeah, I have. I definitely have. Yeah. Like, and you know, I think the thing is, there's a lot of good, there's a lot of good um, programs um, and drives going on at the moment in mm -hmm. the industry, particularly here in the UK, but I believe so in the states as well. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's just really helping. Um, one of one of one of the greatest up and coming people that I know in the industry. I met up with her last week. She works out of, um, well, she's freelance, but she works largely out of Platoon Studios in Tar Yard. Mm -hmm. um, she's just fantastic, and yeah. she's, she's great, and she's actually from the Institute as well. Oh, it's yeah. amazing. Um, so it's been great to see that. It's been great to see people like Manon as well, mm. you know, like, you know, just absolutely doing her thing and bossing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I feel like it's just, like, it's, it's really... You know, it's time for balance. Of course it is. Yeah, um, it, it's, it's time for us to really um, understand, you know, females can actually probably hear better than males as well. Like, I've heard there's some signs. They live longer. <laughs> and they live longer as well. So, you know what I mean? Like, they'll be working. Mm. But also, like, just 
their approach um, to many, many things in life is very, very underrated. Mm. And I feel like it's time to bring more of that into the music industry. Um, and you know, the stats are actually absolutely appalling. Like I, I, I see the stats often because I follow a few Instagram accounts and stuff like mm. that. And they're just terrible. Yeah. They're just terrible. And I, I think it's, it's, it's on all of us to make that change. Of actually. course, yeah. It's on all of us to recognize that you know, females don't just have a specific role within the industry. No. Um, and, and that, I mean, they can do everything equally and probably a lot of the time better than probably, guys yeah. as well. Manon, how was it for you? It's I mean, I've definitely seen a bit of a shift. Um, when I started, I didn't know any other women in engineering and I was the only, for many, many years, I was the only woman in the room, mm. um, which is sometimes a bit, scary and a bit intimidating um but i feel like with i think with social media with you know um universities as well they they're really trying to bring that issue up front and there's a lot that's being done to to trying to bring more not it, i think it goes beyond i think uh, gender it's like just more diversity yeah in in the industry um, to all aspects, to, to all sides aspects, of the exactly. industry, exactly. And, and I feel like today it's a really, I'm really grateful to be part of this panel because I think we're so different. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like there's a, obviously there's a place for everyone, and um, and I think the there's a lot of groups, you know, like you were saying, um, that supporting women and mm. and encouraging, you know, young young women to get into the get into that in the industry and there's a bit more now there's a lot more info about the jobs as well i feel like when yeah. i started there wasn't that much info and there wasn't that many role models as well yeah um so i feel like having having more women now as as a overall like yesterday there was sylvia massey and cat remarks and mm, yeah. i feel like you you can Legend. you can see more women in the industry so i think it encourages you know, students and mm. even, you know, young women in their teenage years and stuff to, to go into the, in the industry and not being so intimidated by it. Yeah. Because it seems like a, it seems like a more viable path when you've got your Sylvia Massey's and mm. Catherine yeah, 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 yeah. and people like yourself yeah. as well. You man. can't be what you can't yeah. see. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's exactly. exactly it. So no, it's great. It's great. Damon, uh, Ricky, sorry. I did that earlier. I called you. <laughs> you said I've got two first Ricky, names. Is you're not the first one. Nor no, I'm the last same, man. Charlie Thomas, I've got two first names. So Thomas. Yeah, Tom, yeah call me yeah. Thomas. Fine. No, I totally agree. And, you know, I feel like we have a precedent. We, history set a precedent where, you know, sometimes and very, very often, actually, some of the, you know, the biggest discoveries or some of the best people in certain industry were actually female. Mm. But they were always like, sort of like, you know, we're talking about like from, from the discovery of the DNA to like space missions to like, there's so many yeah. fields um, where, where men have been like overpowering and sort of like trying to hide things. But now it's, it, you know, it's the time that we get rid of these kind of barriers. And uh, you know, some of the, the people in this industry that I admire the most are female. And I shouldn't yeah. even say female. At this point, we need to get to a point where there's no distinction anymore. Yeah, yeah. That necessary. applies to yeah. race, ethnicity, yeah, yeah. whatever Absolute, you want to call it. Yeah. Like, mm. I'm an engineer, I'm a producer, I'm this. It doesn't like, my age, my uh, gender, my ethnicity should just not even be it doesn't a matter, question. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, it's, I come from a very racist country, sadly. Mm. Uh, but funny enough, in my country, a lot of the head figures in the discography, uh, in the music business side are female, mm. which mm. is, I was, you know, in, looking back actually for a country like Italy, I wouldn't expect that to be necessarily the case, but you know, it's, it, it happens like that. And, and I think it's, you know, it's, it's time. It's time that we, you know we we bear responsibility as of course yeah we're very much more privileged than 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 especially the, you know it's a very white male white led industry yeah and that has to change of course it does mm -hmm. yeah but I'm you know some of the people I admire the most in this industry are of every gender ethnicity whatever exactly. so like same, same. for me I just try not to put people in boxes anymore we're all in the same box yeah. I think that that's and we're how we're just I trying to make music yeah and that's, yeah exactly you know, yeah. and have you know enjoy doing it and work with good people. I think that's the, that's the key, isn't it? Yeah, for yeah. sure. Like Manon said, there's space for all of us. A hundred percent. That's the beauty of this industry anyway. It's like, yeah, we yeah. all, like no, nobody's doing this but, uh, on their own, you know? Mm. Like mm -hmm. very, very few people 
managed to be very successful on their own, and that's great for them. But I feel like music, as every art form, is community, is definitely yeah. collaboration, is mm. is different minds and different souls coming together. Yeah. That's the beauty of it. And I think one of the, one of the nicest things about the industry is when you meet, like like you said, we're all very different. We've got different backgrounds and approaches into the industry, but we also have so much in common. Yeah. And we've, yeah. Like, we've all never met each other apart from about an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> and, you yeah. know, it's, it's like we, we have the, we're like kindred spirits. We're all yeah. in, this, yeah. in this together, which is, which is a yeah, really, really cool side of the industry, I think. We all, talk about. we all bonded over Fairchilds. Exactly. Yeah, we were like, as uh, you would. Do you reckon they'd notice would. if we took any of this? <laughs> <laughs> as you would. They've got so much of this. Gear, you yeah, know, they, won't, they won't notice. Um, so I guess I, I've got the, the, the clock over there is telling me we've got... A, we've got not much time left. So I guess a cheesy question, if you were talking to your 18 year old selves or whatever age you were when you started your journey, what piece of advice, Ricky, would you give to your, to your young self? Me personally, that might only be me, is don't limit yourself. Don't, don't tell yourself that you can't be something. Cause like in my first years of engineering, I was in a very tight, small box. Mm -hmm. I knew I had my place and that was it. I couldn't be anything else. Mm. As in, I couldn't, I wasn't really allowed to be creative. Yeah. Um, and I would tell myself, just don't, don't listen to that. I was myself telling myself that because I was just thrown into the industry like that after yeah. university, which was amazing, but then also a very steep learning curve. Uh, so for me, it would be like, don't, don't let yourself or anyone tell you that you can't do this or you can't do that. Just try it because mm. the more you do it, the more you're going to get better at it and you're going to actually do it. Mm. Whether that's writing songs, production, whatever. Don't, don't tell yourself that you can't do it. Did you find that there were people who told you you couldn't do it? Yeah. 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 There always will be. Mm. And those are assholes. I'm sorry. Yeah. But like, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Was live beef, whatever. Yeah. We said it before. That's We've got, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, there will always be. Mm. But also... Not necessarily maybe telling you, but like putting you in a situation where they, you know, they don't care about your opinion, you mm. don't get listened, you don't, yeah, it's, it's very psychological, again, but just, you know, don't, don't stop writing songs just because you think you're not a good songwriter. Just keep writing songs, it's for you, mm. you know, if anything, you have to do it for you first. Of course, yeah. And then, if somebody likes it, that's your audience, if not, do it for you. Yeah. In the shower. <laughs> in the shower. Not with the guitar, but like singing in the oh, shower. Oh, like when you play that, guitar in the shower. Yeah, well, it sounds It's good. a new approach, you sounds know? Good. It could be amazing, yeah. It sounds good. Put yeah. a mic there. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah. Enough. What kind of mic would you use on that? Is that of interest? No. <laughs> <laughs> SM57. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, uh, Manon, what, what, what would you um, give your, uh, your young self? I think probably uh, quite similar to Ricky, but also I think trust your instincts. Mm. I think in sometimes in situations or job offers or you know situation in studios or what should you do what should you shouldn't do uh who should you, you should you work with and like i think your gut feeling is you know quite important and very often quite right mm. and also to to believe in yourself and to know that it's quite a it's a long process to get to where you want to be mm. and so you have to be patient you have to work hard and and be patient and believe in yourself that you're gonna arrive to a point where y you are where you want to be mm. and there's still going to be room for improvement but um i think we all have you know 10 years or, or so of you know working really hard to be able to be in in this position today of mm. being able to give advice and also being comfortable in what we do and I mean comfortable in terms of skills that we know that we have some of course that can still be improved but um so yeah that that know that it's, that takes a long time yeah and patience have, is such yeah a good patience thing. Yeah. and you have to work at it and I think also what you mentioned there as well is that you're you're never like I'm never happy with my knowledge sure yeah so I'm always like mm. I'm always hungry for some yeah. for a mm. new approach or a new plug-in or a new yeah. mic position or something like it's it just and I like that about the industry yeah. that it never ends. Mm -hmm. Like you can just yeah, keep yeah. learning forever yeah. and yeah. ever. Yeah. It's it's definitely not an industry of instant payoff and I think Definitely not. There's a now we want everything so fast and we want to see result <laughs> and this and that and I, I don't think that if you if you want that, either career or financial or anything, mm. this is not gonna be the right path. But do you think the payoff is so much nicer though, because of, you yeah, invest so much more time into it? I found that if there was anything that I was really proud of, it was always so like, 
it was just mm. I felt so good about it. Yeah. Mm. Because it's so much, so much had gone into me being able to do it. Mm. Um, Definitely. Nice. I mean, what about you, did? What, um, what would your advice be to your young self? Most importantly, hydrate, isn't it? Because yeah. you've got to keep some water <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like that. Speaking of which, <laughs> there you yeah, go. Exactly. <laughs> see, see. Um, <coughs> no, you do. So the thing is, like, there's a few things. Um, I think you'll end up doing a lot of time in studios and stuff like that, and so having water is uh, important. Um, That's but very good. just to make that point. Um, but also, it's important to take care of your mental health as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's probably like underrated how much you should do that. Yeah. So do stuff that isn't to do with music. Go connect with your friends, your family, you know, go for a walk in the park, do whatever you need to do. Mm. Um, because, you know, we, we need to find balance oftentimes. Um, and I think, you know, there's a, there, that, that will help you to recharge and go harder when you're in the studio and stuff like that. Mm. Um, I think like some important things that I've probably learned are your only competition is you. Like uh, don't bother competing with anyone else because no. you're not them, yeah. but also they're not you. So, you know, this is the, the wonderful thing is like all of us here today, we do things ex exceptionally well, but we do them only in our own way. And that's why people will come to yeah. us specifically. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's where you start to learn some of your value as well. I think one other important thing that I would say is to find a mentor. Um, recently, I was reading uh, uh, something by Joseph Campbell, who's a, who's a great writer, and he talks about the hero's journey and obviously the heroine's journey as well. Um, but, you know, um, I think it's important to find someone who can, who can really impart that knowledge and that wisdom mm. um, based on actually the mistakes that they've made, not necessarily the successes that they've no, had. No, no. Um, and, you know, I feel like, you know, it, it, I mean, this is in, in every, you know, big film and story like Yoda and, you know, all of those people. <laughs> Find your Yoda, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and learn from them because at the end of the day, they can, it's not that they can just bring you opportunities or whatever. They no. can help you to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, but more importantly, you're going to learn from their mistakes. And I just learned the most when, when I was basically being mentored in the studio. Mm. Um, there's a mix engineer, um, Dan Parry, who I shadowed for at least a year, mm. just day in, day out. Uh, and I learned, I learned so much from him. Um, and, you know, and also we had a great time as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's, 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 it's just a wonderful thing, really, to find someone who can elevate you in a way that you can't find um, with all due respect, on in books and on YouTube and even in education. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah, you need somebody to yeah. really... It makes you want to get better, doesn't it? Absolutely. They make, like, watching them work makes Absolutely. you feel like, and it kind I of, need more knowledge. And it also adds, automatically rubs off on you. You'll, yeah, you'll yeah. probably have noticed this from, you know, people that you've worked with, your phrases and your marks and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. 100%. It just rubs off on you. Yeah, you, 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 that, the standard that they're working at, the level that they're working at, that becomes the base for you or the bar for you yeah. to be reaching. And so yeah. you're automatically, you know, shooting higher, basically. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And you realise how hard they work. Mm -mm. Yeah. That's why and they're there. It's no joke, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, okay. Yeah. Mm. So that's what it takes. Yes. Yeah. I think that's what, something I may have taught, I told myself is celebrate someone else's victories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think, I don't know if you had the same when I first started out, I kind of got a little bit bitter if somebody was getting work over me or if like, so I saw someone being successful and I thought, oh, why am I not getting that? When actually what I should have done was yeah. just really enjoyed the fact that they, behind the scenes, are working yeah. as hard, if not yeah. harder than I am. Exactly. And we should celebrate everybody's successes. Absolutely. It's not, it's you not can't be jealous in this. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I it's think my early self was, yeah, we definitely had the I mean, we all do it. Yeah, of course. And, and yeah. there will be always the odd, where you're like, but it's more like to your service, like, like if you do a mixed shootout and you don't win or things like that, yeah, those yeah, are yeah. lessons to be learned. It's like, I, mm. they just push you to be better. You mm -hmm. know? Yeah. 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 And, yeah. And everyone grows at different speeds. Different speeds, yeah. Speed, yeah. So yeah. You know, if you compare yourself to someone the same age or or that studied at the same time as you, then if they're doing better, then, you know, but everyone has a different journey yeah. and, you know, you, you can't be bitter about mm. it. Like exactly. And it's a good thing we all have different journeys. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We all have different stories. We yeah. build different personalities. Different I think maybe one, one important thing to, to mention is because it can be overwhelming at times, mm. 
that there's so much to learn and so much crafts to master before you mm -hmm. get mm -hmm. to be good. Like don't ever feel that competition or somebody succeeding should let you down. No. Don't ever let that. I mean, it, it can happen. It happened course, to me yeah. at the beginning. You yeah, know, yeah. it's like just just use that energy, whatever it is, to feel to fuel it back to yourself into b being better, being yeah. a better professional. Just you know, if 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 your mixes are not good enough, the only thing you need to do is just keep mixing and mix yeah. better. Do you know what I mean? Keep at like, it. It has to be. Mm. Don't don't ever use that to to drag you down. Don't let it. Yeah. Don't let it take you down. It has to be all you know rechanneled mm. back yeah. to positivity, yeah. hundred percent. And also, what I will say is like, you know, um, you will, as you were saying earlier, you know, everyone everyone feels the level of insecurity. You were talking about imposter mm. syndrome as well. Um, the thing is, like, we are working in a very insecure industry, mm. and other people will project and you know act out their insecurities on you yeah just ignore them ignore it like just ignore totally. them like they'll try and railroad you in certain ways and whatever and this is why it's important to take care of your mental health yeah. because you know people will be jealous of the things that you achieve mm. and they'll try and and you, you can know, get caught up in that exactly yeah, yeah. just yeah. like yeah. just just, just yeah, brush yeah, it off it yeah go. they don't because nobody Forget sees what you do nobody sees your hard work and exactly of course not, yeah you know but also like very important and i'm sure you know we all see it is like the people we look up and the people we work for, you know, the Marks and uh, Fraser and these people, they're as insecure as we are. Of course. You know, yeah. They're just doing different things. So yeah. And they have been where we are. They have. Like yeah. Everyone's mm -hmm. had the same kind of journey. Yeah. Exactly. So it's, it's a team effort. You it always have team effort. at different levels. You always have to believe in yourself, believe in what you're doing. You have to, you have to love it. If mm. you don't love it, yeah. there's a signal. Yeah, you, you can't know. forget. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> go, go do something else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, my clock ran out about 10 minutes ago. Let's oh, try no. oh, I think we, ha we had some questions, I think, from the audience. I don't know if we're, we don't, oh, no, we don't okay, know. No, I'm being so We're not no, eligible. We've, we've, <laughs> talked, we've talked shit for too long. We've got no <laughs> time's up, studio's closed. <laughs> um, okay. Well, amazing. Well, um, I guess we, we should wrap up then, I guess. Amazing. Yeah, I get that. Um, well, thank you <laughs> thank so much you. to the amazing thank panel you. for joining me. <laughs> thank you, guys. Ricky, Manon, Amir. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Thank you. Um, thanks everybody here. I hope you learned some stuff. I hope it was fun. Happy birthday to Abby Rose. Yeah, happy birthday. The 90th today. Amazing. Um, so yeah, thank you everybody for coming. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.